hurdy-gurdy musical puzzle, sound urchin, stylophone, make your own music box, digital air guitar, automaton. This, my friends, is easily one of the top two best lineups I've ever featured in my gimmicky musical gadget series. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the series where I demo and review gimmicky musical contraptions as a means to justify my gear acquisition syndrome. And don't worry, I have discussed this syndrome with my therapist, and she says that she sees no problem with it as long as the good people of YouTube are subscribing, liking, and commenting on these videos. I'm actually just joking. When I brought it up, she said we had far bigger things <laughs> to spend our time worrying about. But uh, yeah, let's get to it. To kick things off, we've got the automaton. And for some reason, mine looks like a mime with a star on her face. And that, my friends, is another joke. I'm in a rather humorous mood today. I'm well aware that this is meant to look like Peter Chris, the guitarist from Kiss. Now I'm a bit late to the Otama party. These things were memed to oblivion a few years ago, but better late than never. It works very simply. You press your finger on here, it makes a tone. And if you slide your finger around, it changes the pitch. There's a switch on the back that allows you to change the octave. And you can open and close Gene Stanley's mouth here to get a bit of a tremolo effect. For my demo, one would assume that I would play a Kiss song on this guy, but there's no way that I'm spending all the money that I did on this stuff just for my video to get demonetized. So instead, I have another song that I think is suitable for the automaton. You would not believe how many times I played that song at a wedding. And I'll be honest with you, I don't particularly enjoy playing that song at a wedding. However, I had a fair bit of fun playing it on this. So to all my family and friends out there, if you ask me to play Canon in D for your special day, the answer is yes, but I'm playing it on the automaton. To sum my feelings on this, it's a ton of fun. It's cheap and I like it. Now, on the subject of things that are cheap and I like, I'm gonna quickly let you know that my brand new course, The Style of Soloing, is on sale for a bit longer over my course platform, SamuraiGuitarTheory.com. This course is me teaching the fun stuff that brings a solo to life. If you're an intermediate guitarist who wants to take their solos to the next level, I made this with you in mind. Things like sidestep and chromatics, thinking about bends differently, open strings, bebop scales, using chords in your solos, and a whole lot more. This is the stuff that adds that wow factor. For limited time, it's half off with the promo code EARLYBIRD50, or you can get it bundled together with my other soloing course, two for the price of one, with that same promo code. You can find more information at samuraiguitartheory.com. I'll also put up links in the description. Anyways, let's get back to those gadgets. Next up, we've got the playable hurdy-gurdy musical puzzle made by U-Gears. It came unassembled as a whole bunch of flat wooden pieces that when put together, make the traditional instrument called a hurdy-gurdy. Now, I will tell you, I didn't do any of the assembly because the estimated build time was multiple hours and it's just not the kind of thing that I'm all that into. However, my retired father and famed tinkerer was happy to lend a hand. And as you can see, he did a fine job documenting the process as well as building it. So. A round of applause for Samurai Dad. The way this works is you spin the handle, which rotates the rosin wheel, which then vibrates the two strings. You tune the strings here, and these buttons change the pitch. And for my demo, I'm gonna make some pirate rock. Well, that was something. Let's do a review from two angles here. First, as a puzzle. While I didn't do it, my dad told me it was a ton of fun, it's well made, you don't need any glue, everything was included and he would happily do more of them. And since his birthday is coming up soon, I could see myself buying a whole bunch more stuff from you gears on the horizon. On the musical side of things, well, you heard it, it sounds like the world's worst violin played by the world's worst violin player. It's pretty hurting, a hurting hurdy-gurdy if you will. It's a cool ornament. It's neat to see the mechanics inside at work, 
but there is no use for this in a practical musical setting. Next up, we have the stylophone, style as in stylus, and phone as in the Greek word phon, which means sound. To play this, you use the pen to press this silver pad here, and it's laid out like a piano, so it's pretty easy to get the hang of. It sounds pretty cool. Um, here's a short demo to give you an idea what this sounds like. And as cool as that is, it's got me wondering what it would sound like if I ran this through some typical guitar effects. Let's try it through a wah. That is pretty good. Let's try it now through an octaver. My goodness, that is one of the nastiest tones I've dialed up in a while. It's very black keysy, but the keys on this are silver. Uh, let's try a ring mod. Let me tell you, I went into this expecting it to be the kind of thing that you put in your pocket and mess around with on your lunch break every now and then, nothing more. But it is surprisingly awesome, especially when you start affecting the sound. These things have been in production since the 60s, which is always a good sign. You know they're doing something right. I am just, I'm especially impressed with this and will definitely use it in the future. Moving on, we've got the Aeroband pocket guitar, which is like a pick for an air guitar kind of thing. The idea here is that this little pick connects via Bluetooth to an app on your phone, and then you can strum it to get guitar sounds. I always struggle getting these things to work, but setup was painless. I guess I just select a chord. Let's use a nice saucy A minor seven, and then strum as if I was strumming a guitar. Well, it works, but there's a weird clicking sound in there and the latency is terrible. Let me play a normal guitar with this and I'll show you how bad it is. There's also a feature here designed to help you learn songs, but the app is pretty buggy <laughs> and there's only two songs here. One of them I've never heard of and the other is You're Beautiful by James Blunt <laughs> with a typo in it. I guess I gotta make a demo with this. Um, here's me attempting to play You Are Beautiful by James Blunt with this. My life is brilliant. My love is pure. I get what it's trying to do. It just doesn't do it well. I can't see how anybody would get $50 of value out of this thing. Let's see if I can flick it into the trash. Nope, missed by a mile. And next on our list of gimmicky musical gadgets is the sound urchin. This little creature is a bunch of metal sticks attached to an enclosure with a microphone inside so that when you pick one of the spines, you can hear the sound of it picked up. And this is one of those things that makes you question, where's the line between musical instrument and noise maker? Each one of the spines is about the same pitch, so it's not like you can play a melody on it, it just makes noise. As far as making music with this goes, it's not gonna be easy, but one time I was at an open mic and there was this guy playing acoustic guitar while his girlfriend did a Yoko Ono screaming thing while she also just smacked things to make noise. And every single person there was fully engaged in this event. So I'm gonna to try to recapture that vibe by running this through some weird effects, but uh, don't expect to hear any Yoko style vocals. The sound urchin is made with a very specific type of artist in mind. If most of your gigs are part of art displays, hey, this could be calling your name. To wrap up this video, last for today, we have the Kickerland Make Your Own Music Box. The way that this works is you have your music box here and then you feed a sheet like this one through it. The demo here is for happy birthday. Let's see how it sounds. So every hole 
in your sheet triggers the sound in this thing. And it also comes with a bunch of these blank sheets and a hole puncher so that you can punch holes into the staff here and create your own music. Some thoughts as I rate out a song here, this is insanely time consuming and I'm covered in these tiny little paper dots, but uh, it's pretty fun and it kind of reminds me of writing out MIDI. It's like analog MIDI. And here is my last hole. With that, my song is now complete. Let's feed it through the music box and see how it sounds. Hey, that was pretty good. I'm gonna record some background tracks for that, put on a lo-fi filter and uh, see if we can't get a mood going here. Remember when I said that putting together a hurdy-gurdy puzzle was not my kind of thing? Well this, this is my kind of thing. It's easy to use and figure out. I don't want to tell you how much time it took me to put each one of these individual dots in here, but I enjoyed it. And I don't think I would have ever come up with something that sounds like this had it not been for the uh, Make Your Own Music Box. And that, my friends, is another round of gimmicky musical gadgets. If you'd like any more information on any of this stuff, I'll put up some links in the description. And remember, my new course, The Style of Soloing, is now out, and for a bit longer, it's 50% off with promo code EARLYBIRD50, or you can get it bundled together with my other soloing course, two for the price of one, with that same promo code. You can find more information at samurai-guitar-theory.com. I'll also put up links in the description. Thank you all for watching. If you wanna get caught up in this series, you can hit that link up there. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, and stay tuned for a wide range of musical content. Until next time, look after yourselves, look after each other, look after the planet. I'm Samurai Guitarist, and I'll see you again soon.